Welcome to Becky's House of Sewing. Um, live from the sewing room. Uh, this is where I, myself, Becky, talk about all things thread and needle. Um, I do a lot of cross stitch. I do a lot of quilting. I like embroidery. I like applique. I, there, if it has a thread and a needle, I probably like it. Um, I love knitting and crocheting, but that's not something I, I really do yet. I say yet because my mom has those things. Um, and I basically want to <laughs> do everything that she does. So I'm sure eventually I will. Um, but I don't right now. Anybody notice anything in the background? Roxy is done. I'm like looking at Roxy in the background. Uh, so Roxy is done. I'll um, do a insert a little video here, a little up close of the of the uh, stitching. Um, but it's it's completed. Uh, not perfect, but I love it still nonetheless. Um, otherwise, she is in timeout. Um, I've worked on her long enough. <laughs> I need a moment away from Roxy, um, and then I will get her cleaned up. I will give her a little bath. I will give her a little um, ironing, and I think I'm going to plan to uh, wrap it around the foam core and then maybe take it to a framer and have the framer um, uh, put the frame around it and maybe do some glass because I really like the glass. So Roxy is done. I think I finished her up Saturday, Sunday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, and then I got Token of Fall, all the threads um, on thread drops and ready to go. I'll insert a picture here so you can see uh, my cute little setup with my floss drops from my mom. Love that. And welcome to Buster Brown. Welcome. Um, but here is my next project that I'm really excited. Now, you might say, Becky, is this your only project ready to go? No. No, it's not. But this is the one I'm going to work on. This is where my heart is calling me. Uh, but, you know, you, you need to have things ready. You know, in a moment's notice. So, um, I think you guys may remember we, uh, my family took my mother-in-law, my husband, and my mom and dad met us down there to Greenville, South Carolina, to the Upcountry History Museum. And we went there because um, a collection of, or a selection of Ken Burns's quilts are there on display. And we needed to see them in person. And like any quilt show or going to a fabulous cross stitch or craft store, you just come home with all this bundle of excitement. So I'm glad that I had prepped everything for Token and Fall. I literally just had to thread my needle and get started. So we got home around 6.30 last night. Um, and, and today is Wednesday, November 10th. So of course we had Wednesday stitching. Uh, so I, uh, this is where I'm at with Token of Fall. Halfway across this border, I had to change um, pages. I really want to make sure I get over here. I think I calculated everything right, but as one may recall, not always the best of counters. Um, even though counting cross stitch is one of my favorite hobbies, not a great counter. Um, but I absolutely so fun to stitch. Um, okay, let's see what I remember here. Um, this is I 36 count. I am doing one over two, which is my first time doing one over two. So I'm using the pin stitch to get started. And I'm really enjoying it. Um, and let's see what I, if I know I saved my paperwork for such a time as this. So this is Lakeside Linens 36 count vintage porcelain. So I don't think it's going to take the whole piece of linen that I have. Please don't ask me what size linen I have, uh, what, you know, cut I do. I, I don't know. But I know it's uh, smaller than, or larger than this um, piece. So I'm very excited to have a little extra because, you know, stash. 
Um, so I've gotten started on that and, um, let me, let me just show you here. So, um, already have a little bit of a dilemma. Let me see if I can put this up here so it doesn't shine through as much. There you go. So, uh, I really like the colors. Uh, I, Liz Matthew, uh, stitched this all in, uh, silks, Gloriana silks. And I didn't want to do that. I, I really like the DMC. Um, and in this video, the bl light blue color actually looks pretty decent. Um, but the, the two blues, let me see if I can get a little closer for you. The two blues are Weeks Dye Works, which is the first time I'm using Weeks Dye Works. Um, but it's a color fast cotton. I, I really like that. Um, I'm saying I'm a lot, sorry. If you look at this, the blues uh, and the light blue especially pop out a little bit more. So the Weeks Dye Works that the shop chose for me. I don't really like the light blue. I like the dark blue. I don't really like the light blue. So I went ahead and um, had to go to Michael's. Darn. Um, and then I had also told them that if you notice in the, the letters are black, I thought, hmm, maybe I'll do like 30, 31, that dark black brown color. I've always liked that color. But the more I look at it, the more I really like that sharp contrast. So I said, well, if I'm going to Michael's, why don't I just buy the anchor? Ah. Do, 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 do. Oh, it's not focusing. Will it focus? Will it focus? Anyway, uh, so I got the large spool because my mom always told me just buy the big one buy the big one. Always get the bigger one. It's what my mother has always taught me. So I got the big spool of black anchor and I got 932, um, which just looking at it, I know I'm going to like it a lot better. So now I get to pick out those two squares, the light blue that I did. And then I can also start doing some of the alphabet so I can work my way down to the bird. So I'm excited about that. Yay. So that's uh, big news in the cross stitch world in Becky, Becky's um, life. I was going to say Becky's house of sewing. Um, let's get back to Greenville. Had a great trip. Um, uh, very smooth, very fun uh, being with the family. Uh, my husband travels a lot for his work. So we have a lot of points. So he was able to get us... Um, Instead of two hotel rooms, he rented an apartment, kind of like a bed and breakfast. Excuse me, I'm trying not to sneeze. And so we were able to all kind of stay in the same place and relax and it had a refrigerator and we could make coffee and breakfast if we wanted to, that kind of thing. So it was, it was uh, very nice uh, to kind of relax and have our own digs, but also be kind of in a living room setting. So after we met up on Monday, ate, uh, ate a little lunch, got checked in, uh, caught up, chatted a little bit, and then we went to dinner. And then uh, we were all kind of a little tired, so we ended up just uh, going to bed a little early. And then the next, uh, today, yesterday, um, we got up, had a leisurely morning, because Nobody likes to just wake up and get going. Ugh. So we all had our coffee, had a little breakfast, got our stuff packed back up, and then went to the History Museum. Uh, now, I guess on Monday, we also, we had a little time to kill, so we went to Marietta's uh, Stitch and Sew and Quilt store. I, I'm not sure that's her exact name. Um, but, uh, when you go to a fabric store and they also sell Janome's there, so it was nice to see all the cool Janome's. Um, there wasn't a whole lot, again, that I really needed or wanted or anything like that. But, you know, you, you can't just go to a fabric store and not buy fabric. 
So I got this little guy fat quarter. I got this little guy fat quarter. And I got this little guy fat quarter. And no, I don't know what I'm going to do with them. Uh, the next day, we um, I had looked up for a cross-stitch store. And there's this place called Panda Panda's Crossing. And um, so that has cross-stitch and beads. Um, mostly a bead store, but I mean, they have a decent selection of cross-stitch and fabric and uh, lots of fancy flosses and things like that. So again, um, they didn't have a lot of... Um, samples to inspire one. I don't know if you know or notice that, you know, cross stitches are really pretty, but seeing them in person, it's really what takes your breath away and gets y'all in inspired. So, but again, I don't want to be rude. I want to make sure I'm spending some money. So I got this little charm, little scissor charm, because girl can't have too many scissors. Cute, right? Right? Little scissors. Uh, and then I got some finishings for no particular reason at all. I got some mini pom-poms from Dames of the Needle. Cute little pom-poms. And then I got some Rick Rack because, again, why not? Um, and this is uh, Lady Dot Crates. So, yeah, I spent a little money at each little shop. That was fun. Um, before I left, God, I'm, you know, just going back and forth. We're not doing this in any particular order. Um, I've been chatting with some of the, um, of my friends at work who like to cross stitch and, uh, found out that they might not know as much cross stitch techniques as I do. Uh, so like, kind of like, how do I get started now? Now that I have all this stuff, because if you tell me you want a cross stitch, then I will probably overload you with fun things because you, you know, stitchy kindness needs to be moved on to all locations. So, um, I, uh, got excited again and got some things. I, I know that they have some projects, uh, the two girls that want to cross stitch together. Um, they already have a couple projects, but I thought it might be fun if I'm helping them learn some techniques that maybe we have some simple something or other. And so I got from the fat quarter shop, um, these little stitch cards from Lori Hart, Holt, Lori Holt. Whoa. Um, and I thought they were fun and quick and easy and simple. Um, and again, I, I think they're kind of both new to cross stitch. And uh, so I got the thread pack for that so we can share or, you know, whatever. And then I got two pieces of Ada because good Ada isn't, there's nothing wrong with Ada. Um, I, I like smaller stitches, so let's hope that this isn't too small for them to learn on. But, you know, it's kind of nice to not have to think about so many different holes. And Ada's kind of nice with that. And again, there's something wrong with a, a nice Ada. And these are uh, fiber on a whim. And I'm used to Ada that's like stiff as a board. <laughs> Has a lot of sizing in it. Um, and you have to like wash it a million times to make it nice and flexible, but these are, these feel really good in the hand. And two simple um, colors. I don't know if you can see the difference. One is cappuccino and the other is cream and sugar. So those are kind of nice. Uh, so we'll split those up and we can, you know, test out different techniques and uh, play around with that. So I'm excited. I think we're gonna do that in a couple weeks on a Sunday, just kind of get together, have a cup of coffee, and do some stitching, which always a good thing. Why am I putting this away now? I can do that later. Another thing I'm excited about is, um, well, 
I've been, I've been in a little shopping spree. I did get another quilt kit because I'm impatient and I, I wanted uh, to, I ordered Tula Pink's Pining for You quilt, um, which should be arriving sometime in November, but it hasn't arrived yet and it's uh, not shipped yet. So what's a girl to do, but to buy another uh, quilt kit because there's um, uh, a designer that I really like who I have a slight connection with. Uh, her niece also works at the container store and my mom has taken a couple quilt classes from uh, this lady and she has designed some shock cottons. Her name is Pepper Corey. Hi Pepper, if you ever watch this. Um, I really, really think Pepper Corey is very cool. Um, again, a person that I aspire to be does a lot of, uh, cool retro things, Sasha Co things. Um, just, I really like her point of view and her teaching technique is really cool. Uh, but she's designed these fabrics. So the weave and the weft, I believe. Uh, in a shock cotton, it's actually two different colors woven together, and they look like one color. But when you look at it in a different direction, it can kind of have an iridescent look to it. So somebody, another quilt designer, has created a foundation paper piecing uh, kit to um, promote the peppered cottons by Pepper Corey of Studio E. And uh, I really, I'm drawn to the solids and um, we've always wanted to work with peppered, peppered cottons. So I jumped on it. I said, why the heck not? Sure, I've got like four projects going, but who doesn't need one more? Um, so that should be in the mail to me here shortly. But um, I'm also very excited to get started on, because uh, I haven't done anything more with my um, donation quilt. I got the, I just haven't, I haven't sewn anything more on it. It's waiting for me. It's not going anywhere. Um, but when I saw my mom, I said, Mom, can you bring your Accu quilt cutter so that I can cut up my jeans. I finally found a pattern. Um, I've been hoarding my old jeans for a long time, wanting to make something out of it. I just didn't know what. And AccuQuilt had posted an ad about um, using denim in the two and a half inch strips and sewing four of them together and then doing the um, uh, fence, rail fence where you have the rows going this way and then the next rows go that way and then back and forth, back and forth, uh, like a basket weave kind of pattern. Um, and I was like, ooh, that's what I wanna do. So, um, on my sewing table, my mommy brought the AccuQuilt cutter, yay! So that's the cutter, cutter, and then this is the mat. Um, and, so one day in the near future, I'll do some cutting. So this is where I want to come back and talk about mothers. Um, I highly recommend getting a mother that does things that you're interested in or vice versa, since that would make more sense of becoming interested in the things that your mother is interested in, because then you can get all her stuff and actually use it. <laughs> I give it five stars. Having a mother that has all the cool things uh, rates pretty high. Um, so I, I uh, will be using that. I'm sure in the near future, you guys will be seeing me use it and show you how I'm putting some of it together because uh, I'm looking forward to making like, just a cuddle quilt, something for me. I might uh, make the blocks and then do some embroidery on it before I sew them all together. I don't know. I kind of think of it as like a deconstructed a denim jacket that you can snuggle under. It's 
kind of my, my thought. So yeah, so I'm going to have my donation quilt, my pining for you quilt, my, it's called the Roaring Twenties, the Peppered, co uh, co Peppered Cottons by Peppered Corey uh, quilt is the Roaring Twenties. It's a really cool, really cool pattern. Look it up. And um, then I have my denim jacket quilt. Then I have my token of fall cross stitch. I have some things to talk about. So I'm excited. But I am going to let you guys go. I'm going to add um, the video that I made of the quilts from, um, from the Ken Burns exhibit. If I have not already done so, I will do it now. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. And I look forward to talking about all the things again next week. Um, please subscribe and like and all the things, share, all that good stuff. But most importantly, um, do some stitching. Enjoy what you're doing. Uh, live it up and uh, find some friends to chat about it because that's the best part about sewing is being able to talk about it and exchange ideas and thoughts and learn and um, mull things over all at the same time. So I hope that you have that in your world. If not, consider us friends and hope you can uh, stitch while, while you get to watch some floss tube. Thanks so much. Talk to you soon. Bye.